my brothers, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings on his fingers and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. We are reminded that we gather on the ancestral land of the Wampanoag people. We marvel at the beauty and the mystery and the creativity of creation. The texture of leaves, some fuzzy, some bumpy, some smooth. And yet, even with all of this beauty and bounty, we misuse and overuse and abuse our natural resources. We've polluted our air. We've added toxins to the water. Numerous species are now extinct. Oh God, center us into this time with one another as we acknowledge this nature gap, as we worship and learn and pray and sing together, teach us a way forward that will provide equal access to both natural spaces and natural resources for the health and well-being of all. The end of Dr. King's life saw him advocating for other causes besides an end to segregation and racial discrimination. We often don't hear about this, but in 1967, the year before Dr. King was killed, he moved his family to the urban concrete slums of Chicago. Coretta Scott, his wife, is quoted as saying, there's nothing green in sight. In the last book that Dr. King published, he reasons that the criminal responses that we see in our cities are the result of environmental causes and are not racial. Won't you sanitized version of MLK's words. A shying away from tough conversations to focus on just loving one another. And I won't be doing that today. <laughs> Dr. King and other leaders focused on Chicago to highlight and fight against discriminatory housing and economic policies. Black homeowners were, for were being forced into certain parts of the city and low-income tenants were living in rat-infested apartments, in some cases without heat, often in disrepair. The conditions that people were facing were due to a racist housing policy called redlining. Redlining is the practice of denying people access to credit because of where they live. The legacy of redlining persists to this day through the racial wealth gap and the climate crisis. <laughs> 